Kobayashi Keita is a Japanese visual and sound artist. The sound palettes that he is known for utilizing are pure sign tones, as well as white noise. And he organizes his raw sounds to create a rhythmic texture that is often danceable. His signature visual style consists of an alternating black and white rectangles that create this sort of flashing barcode. Concept behind his work is heavily influenced by mathematics and physics. Sonification and visualization of data are the through line of his body of work. In this video, we'll do a basic analysis of Ikeda's music and visuals and recreate them all in pure data. Okay, let's analyze Ikeda's sound palettes and we'll recreate them. The Pure Data Patcher is free to download for you to follow along with the video. Impulse is one of the key ingredients of Ikeda's music. It's this click sound that can be heard in most of his pieces. We can either create the impulse sound with this combination of objects, or the click tilde object from the Neil Wind external. Typically, it's played in this constant 16th or 32nd note pattern. And each note has different amounts of low-pass filter applied, or at least that's what it sounds like. And we can use a random panner so that these click sounds are moving all over the stereo space. Cool, so it's already starting to sound like a real Ikeda piece. Next, let's add a rhythmic high-frequency sine tone. When we listen to a piece such as Data Multiplex, we hear this very high frequency sine tone that's played in this Morris code like rhythm. So here's a 10,000 Hz sine tone with a very short envelope. And we can use a step sequencer to create the rhythmic pattern. We can now add a low frequency tone. Let's add a touch of distortion with the clip tilde object. And there will be a step sequencer for this sound as well. Two measures of 16th notes. Next, let's add a reverberated sine tone. For reverb, we can either use Rep3 tilde or a VST such as Valhalla Supermassive. Please watch my VST tutorial for reference. And to finish it all up, we also have a high frequency sine tone. Okay, here's what it sounds like all together. I made a pattern very similar to Ikeda's piece Data Matrix, which is a lot of people's most favorite. This patcher also includes that beat one beep sound that we hear in the piece. And of course, his music is known for its use of glitch sound and white noise. So I recommend that you listen to your favorite pieces that feature these sounds and analyze how they're utilized. And to make the music sound more structured, we can of course change patterns with the step sequencer to add or remove sounds as the piece progresses. And it could be more convenient to use a MIDI controller to change the volume and pattern, which I need to make a video on. Another compositional approach is to simply record all of these sounds and use a DAW to structure everything. As mentioned in the beginning, data is a crucial aspect of his art, so implementing data sonification to create the rhythmic pattern could be an interesting direction to take with his patcher. And we can't finish a Ryoji Ikeda tutorial without going over the visuals. His most known visual style is the alternating black and white rectangles. This live footage demonstrates how he maps the music to the visual. Okay, let's use Gem to recreate this. The main challenge is to efficiently create rows of rectangles. It's daunting and tedious to use separate render chains for each rectangle. And the particle technique is not quite suited for this type of visuals either. Luckily, I found this video where a repeat object was utilized. After analyzing what that object does, I was able to create the visuals with a simpler approach than this patcher. Let's go step by step. Here we have a thin white rectangle, simple as that. 
The next step is to move this rectangle from one end to the other. The starting position is negative 3.95 and the end point is positive 3.95. Here we have a counter that increments the rectangle's position by 0.1. Let's take a closer look. Every time this button is hit, this part of the counter increments by 1 and goes from 0 to 79 and it loops. And the integer is multiplied by 0 0.1. Then it's shifted by negative 3.95, which again is the starting point. Therefore, this counter moves the rectangle from negative 3.95 to positive 3.95 by the increment of 0 0.1. And we can automate with a metro object. Okay, let's randomize the color. As the rectangle moves from left to right, the color is either black or white in each position. Let's turn it on for the next section though. Okay, we're ready to use the repeat object. Follow what I'm doing on screen right now to install this external. This object outputs multiple bang messages at once. So repeat 80 will output 80 bang messages pretty much simultaneously. Instead of connecting the metro object to the counter, let's use the repeat object. Now, it looks like we created a single thick rectangle, but it's actually the thin rectangles appearing in every single position all at once. So we can think of it as the rectangle moving by each position so fast that we see it appearing in all positions simultaneously. Or at least that's what I think is happening. And when we bring back the color randomizer, there it is. Okay, let's add the size control. So we can scale the thickness of the rectangle. And when we do that, we need to also adjust the starting position as well as the increment amount. I got these scale values by trial and error. And when we have a very thin rectangle, we need a higher repeat argument. So I just use a high number. It's fine if we go out of bounds since everything is happening simultaneously. And we can have two rows by changing the height of the rectangle and copy and pasting the algorithm like this. Finally, we'll have a big white rectangle that will quickly appear and disappear and that'll create a flashing effect. Having a high repeat value is CPU intensive, so we have to optimize the patcher in order to display many thin rectangles. We can simply copy and paste the rectangles and then shift them over, which is what the sub patcher is doing. We can also change the global delay from 5 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds, which helped a lot. Okay, let's map the music to the visuals. The send and receive objects can work between separate patchers. So simply, we can map receive high tone and receive bass to the size and receive high rhythm to the flashing. And it's complete. As usual, treat this patcher as a basic foundation that you can build upon. I hope that you got something out of this tutorial that you can apply to your own original art. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next video.